Hi there and welcome to the security uh, desk credential training. Uh, this is training SC, STC001. And my name is Rafael Morales, technical trainer for Genetech. Today we're going to be talking about the access rules. A quick, uh, we're going to take a quick overview uh, of what an access rule is. We're also going to talk about the application call, uh, called the car holder management within security desk and how we can create car holders, add cars to those uh, car holders as well. Uh, we're going to do a car request. And the car request is basically, uh, let's say for example, uh, we have a, uh, a user, a brand new user uh, that I can create, but for some reason I don't have access to, uh, for example, print the car. I can make a request to have someone else uh, finish the process of enrolling this credential uh, and car holder to the system. And also we are, we're going to do a little bit of uh, credential management as well. Okay, our system and security uh, uh, center uh, and security desk, uh, all the access rules are based on the car holder and not the credential. What I mean by that is uh, we're going to have several or maybe a few cards, maybe 10,000 cards. Uh, a lot of the systems out there, are not all of them, uh, but most of them, do assign the rights and privileges to open doors to the actual car. Uh, not our system. Our system uh, is based on creating um, users and car holders and giving access and privileges to doors to the actual car holder. Then that car, uh, car holder is assigned a credential. So basically the credential is going to inherit the, um, the access rules uh, from the car holder itself. So as we can see, uh, we basically going to tie the car or the credential to the car holder. Okay? And the credential is going to inherit the access privileges uh, when linked to this car holder. Um, again, individuals can have multiple credentials. So uh, a car holder can have two, one, two, three, four cards. Uh, but they all going to inherit the privileges, access privileges from the actual car holder and again not the credential. Uh, this make uh, management really easy. Um, let's say for example one of the cars or the car holder car gets stolen or lost we can easily search for the credential and we can uh, disable it and actually delete it from the system uh, fairly easily. Uh, and again a temp car can be assigned to the car holder. Uh, let's say for example uh, a user uh, goes to work. He forgets the he or she forgets the uh, his uh, credential, his card. We can easily assign a temporary car for that one day to this car holder. Now we have a uh, uh, in our system. Uh, our privileges to uh, to areas and doors are based on access rules. Now, on the access rules, we like to, uh, or the access rules actually have three components, and we like to call them the three W's. Um, you guys can see the access rule in the middle here, and basically, we're going to grant or deny access on our access rules. Um, again, most of the systems that we have, uh, we always going to be granting access, uh, but in certain um, uh, circumstances, it depends on the customer. We can also use access rules to deny access. Uh, to our system. Now, it, and if, if we do have a, uh, a conflict in which we have uh, a access rule that grants access to a door or an area, um, and we also have another access rule that de denies access to that same door or area, uh, we actually take the, uh, the, more, uh, the more restrictive uh, of the two and we're going to end up denying access to that person. Now, uh, on the top here, we have uh, one of the three components. Uh, we have the when, and the when is actually based on a schedule. Uh, basically, the schedule is a uh, collection of dates, um, time frame, that the access rule is going to work. Uh, for example, uh, the access rule to door number one uh, might be um, Monday to Friday. Monday to Friday, we're going to uh, grant access to um, let's say Kathy Wilson 
or uh, myself, Rafael Morales, I'm going to be able to, between Monday and Friday, have access uh, to that door. Uh, then we have on the left, we have the who, which is the uh, car holders. Uh, now, it can also be uh, car holder groups. And actually, we do recommend to use car holder groups uh, to uh, create or um, grant access to that area. So we're going to have car holder groups. And within those groups, then we're going to have our car holders. Then we have the third W is the where. Uh, we're going to have doors, floors, uh, if by any chance we do have elevators, uh, and also we're going to have areas. I like to call areas uh, a, a group of doors. Uh, so for example, we have uh, building number one, and we have the perimeter uh, doors uh, to that building. And we're going to have those sets of doors within a, an area. We can call it just the um, building number one area and all the doors around that building not not the doors inside the building uh, for example we can have a door uh, to closet with important documents not not those doors but the perimeter doors that have main access to the building and as we can see the when uh, which is the calendar the who and the where uh, are the three components to the access rule now you know there are some access rules that only have two components. You know, we have a when and we have the who, but if we don't complete uh, this triangle with the where, uh, then we're going to have access rules out there uh, that really don't do anything. Uh, they're not complete. So we got to have our three W's. So for example, access rule number one happens Monday to Friday. Uh, we're going to grant access to Raphael to that door number one. And then we have this access rule complete. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, it is recommended to create groups uh, on our system. So let's just imagine that we have um, a thousand or five thousand car holders within our system. It's a lot easier to create uh, car holder groups and then assign those users or car holders. I'm sorry, to those groups. Uh, so, for example, we can have a uh, operators uh, group or contractors like in this example here an accounting group finance group uh, and then we can uh, all the people within that group we can assign them to uh, each individual group it makes uh, management a lot easier again assigning car holder groups it is recommended uh, to the access rule so we're gonna have car holders that we create we're gonna assign them to the car holder group and then that's gonna be one of our W's which we're going to assign to the access rule that we create. The car holders can belong to multiple car holder groups. And also, in this example, we're going to have Bob. Uh, it's a car holder, which is assigned to the car uh, contractors group. The contractors group is going to be assigned to the access rule called contractors. And then we have the where assigned to the access rule. Now Bob is going to have access to our main entrance. And again, the car holders will inherit the access belonging to the group link, like in this example here, to the access rule. Now if we continue with the, uh, uh, with the PowerPoint slide here, uh, we have the car holder management task. And very similar to the one that we have on our system 5L. On 5.2, we, uh, we continue the, uh, the same theme. Uh, if we look at the bottom here, we have the Create a New Car Holder button, really uh, nice and big. Uh, we can also have the Delete Car Holder, if we wanted to delete some of the users, car holders uh, within our system. And if we want to modify one of the car holders, we can just click here on the Modify button. Uh, we also have the Return Car, uh, similar to the one that we have on 5.0. Uh, if we, uh, let's say for example, we gave someone, uh, and we're going to go over this a little later, we gave someone a temporary car. Uh, and they're returning that car, we can add it right back to our system, database of credentials. On the top, uh, we have all the users that we have within our system with a lot of information, like first, last name. We also have our search button, as before. If we want to quickly search for uh, a car holder within our system, uh, 
if we have many users, uh, a thousand, ten thousand users, and we're looking for uh, last na uh, last name Smith or Morales, for example, we can just type M O M O R, and it will quickly show all the uh, all the users with last name M O R, first name as well. Um, the same, we do have the button here that we can also uh, use the credential to do a search. Uh, for example, we just found a car in the parking lot. We don't necessarily have a template and a printer to uh, to print out um, photos or pictures of the uh, of the car holders, um, and we don't necessarily know who the car belongs to. We can bring this car to a um, desktop reader uh, or a uh, the nearby uh, access. Uh, um, a reader and we can uh, read that car and automatically will come up uh, who it belongs to okay. now see uh, let's say for example I do have a lot of uh, a lot of um, uh, got to do a search for a car holder again now we're going to open a car holder management tab same thing we did in uh, in 5.0 um, and again uh, I can use uh, the first name last name to quickly search using my search window here to quickly search for that car holder we can also use the uh, um, the credential uh, we send that to an access uh, an access point uh, that could be the USB uh, reader on our desktop or if we have a, uh, a door that we can use to present that car we can do that um, and know who that uh, credential uh, belongs to or maybe it doesn't really belong to anybody um, also on the left side uh, we're going to have the advanced search if I can uh, or want to use uh, more um, more information aside from just username uh, or first name and last name I can use uh, different filters to look for uh, that credential actually if we uh, go to the live system uh, quickly here uh, I'm going to do a quick search for uh, Kathy and quickly uh, I can see uh, Kathy, uh, Kathy uh, Wilson on my database I'm going to also I know I have this car uh, which is assigned to Kathy uh, in advance I already have this car so let, but let's say for example I didn't know that this uh, credential belongs to Kathy I can then go to my car holder with credential search and I'm going to present it to an access point and if I had, uh, I can either use door number one, door number two, which is part of my system, or I can also use my USB reader. I'm going to use door number two. I'm going to present this car to door number two and door number one. I'm sorry, and there it is. It's my uh, uh, Kathy Wilson. So this car that I just found on the parking lot belongs to Kathy Wilson. Now let's go ahead and uh, create a car holder. Um, I have a small test uh, system uh, with two uh, with two doors, and I got so uh, some pre-added uh, credentials that I can use. So the first uh, first of all, let me uh, jump into my live system. I'm going to go back to my security desk homepage and open a car holder management task. And again, depending on the rights, you're going to have that option there. I'm going to go to create new car holder and I'm going to type in the, uh, the first name uh, for this example I'm going to use Sylvia and her last name is Benson okay she got an email address uh, I can use um, this space to add more uh, uh, her email uh, okay now if you notice here I can select the picture for Sylvia if I right click I have three options to load from a file so for example I already have some pictures on my uh, on my computer that I can use for um, attached to my uh, credentials not credentials sorry my car holders and I can use those pictures to uh, to attach to uh, to Sylvia I can uh, it, I do have the option of a webcam on my computer uh, I can take a snapshot from that webcam uh, if I do not have a webcam but I do have a uh, a computer uh, or a camera, uh, Omnicast camera, uh, nearby. I can actually use my Omnicast camera to also take a snapshot. My example, I'm just going to load it from a file, and I have Sylvia, Sylvia Benson, and I'm going to select her picture. Okay. Now, if I notice here on the uh, 
On the right side, I have all the car holder groups available to me. I have door number one, door number two. For now, I'm going to use door number two for Sylvia. And I'm going to delete door number one car holder group. So what's going to happen is all the, uh, the um, uh, Sylvia is going to inherit all the privileges uh, given to car holder group door number two. Okay. Now I'm going to add a credential now to Sylvia and I'm going to use a, an existing credential. Um, we're going to go over how to add a credential uh, either automatically or manual through the same process but for now I'm just going to add or use the existing credential that I have on my system and I know that card number is 95 so I'm going to look for 00095 that information I'm getting from uh, the actual card uh, all the cards do have the card number printed on them uh, the two things that are not included are the um, the car format and the facility code but I know the card number is 95 I'm going to select 95 and there it is I have added Sylvia Benson as a car holder part of the car holder group door number two and assign a credential to that car holder yeah, I can either remove the car uh, the credential I can also assign a temporary car to Sylvia if, for example, she forgot her car back home. I can actually assign from the database another credential uh, to this user. And I can also edit it as well. Okay. Uh, I can also use extended grant time. Uh, that's uh, an ADA thing. Uh, if, for example, uh, Sylvia has some... Um, uh, So yeah, some handicap. Um, we can actually extend the grant time to Sylvia, and also um, bypass anti any anti passback rules. Uh, for example, a lot of the VVPs we might want to add or check the anti passback rules. We actually want all our VPs to be able to uh, uh, enter and exit any of the areas. Uh, and uh, she's going to inherit all the security clearances from the car holder group gonna save and close okay and now if I look for our user Sylvia there she is and now if I go back to security desk to my monitoring task I'm going to percent my car number number one I'm going to add my door to the monitor entities because I want to make sure that I know what's going on in door number two if you notice here, um, it's synchronizing, it's waiting uh, for all that information to be downloaded uh, to the door. But I'm going to present the car. And there it is. Sylvia has access to door number two. Now I want to briefly go back to the car holder management and go back to Sylvia and modify because I want to explain. Um, uh, this option here of access rules uh, we notice that we added Sylvia to the car holder group door number two and we spoke about access rules so we have the who which is Sylvia um, and we have uh, her being part of car holder group number two so if we go to access rules we notice all the access rules are assigned to Sylvia uh, by default our system is going to have the all open rule and the lockdown rule which cannot be deleted uh, but they're not necessarily a part of Sylvia as a car holder. Right now we've got access rule door number two and we do have the associated entity within that access rule. So we have the who and the where. And also we have the, the W, the when. So we have all the three components of the access rule um, pretty much uh, in this window. Um, and we notice the um, the schedule for access rule door number two is a 24-7. Okay. Now let's say for example that I want to create an, uh, a new car holder, but
but I don't have a credential already added to my system. I can use uh, a different option, um, create my car holder and then select either automatic entry or a manual entry. So let's jump into the live system and let's give that a try. So we're going to have, want to create another car holder. I'm going to create a new car hol holder. My example, I'm going to use now Andrew Smith. I'm going to type Andrew. Whoops. Sorry. Andrew, last name, Smith. I am going to assign or select a picture and I'm going to load it from a file that I have already created. Okay. And now I'm going to assign Andrew Smith to the car holder group. Again, those are already created on the system. And I'm going to select door number two as the group he's going to belong to. And I'm going to delete door number one. Now here I can add either an automatic entry, a manual entry, and before I did use the existing credential because I already added some car to the system. Now automatic entry is just a matter of presenting an available car to one of my readers on the system. That could be a door reader, an access point, or it can actually be a desktop reader, USB reader that I can use to enroll my credentials. I'm going to use the automatic entry. Now I do not have a USB uh, reader on my computer so I'm going to use one of my entry points and I'm going to select door number one. Okay, So I can now present and as we can see we have the USB reader as an option or a door as an option as well. I'm going to present this car to my door number one. There it is. And I'm going to now add this car that's the credential for Andrew Smith. Now I'm going to save. If I look into um, Andrew, there it is. Now I have a credential assigned to Andrew. Okay. Now if I go back to my monitoring task and I present this car on door number one. It doesn't show. Why? Because I'm not monitoring that entity. So let me go ahead and do that. Let me monitor door number one, or actually area, main building, because my door number one is part of that main building area. Let me go to now the area. And I should be able now to present the car once again. And there it is. Andrew Smith. Uh, was given access to door number one. Actually, I wanted to go back to my uh, car holder management and show you that we can add more uh, credentials to our car holder. If I return to my application, go back to car holder, I'm going to do a search for Andrew, Andrew Smith. Right now, I do have my car. 12881 8, 8, 1, associated with my car holder. Again, Andrew Smith is part of car holder group door number one and the main door access rule. I actually did change it, but it's part of door number one. Uh, it has all the access 24-7. Uh, okay, go back to identity. We can add another credential, for example, if I had a uh, pin reader on my uh, on my door. I don't have right now, but I could add a uh, pin credential. Uh, in this case, then the user will have to enter uh, the pin number as well uh, to be able to gain access. And we have uh, uh, basically numbers from uh, number one all the way to 65,535 that we can use. So we can type one, two, three, four, five. And again, one, two, three, four, five. Click OK. And now we have two credentials for Andrew Smith. You can go to an edit. If I wanted to know the number, there it is. Okay. If I want to remove the credential, it's just as simple as removing that credential. Now I'm back to uh, just one, uh, one credential for my 
car holder. Okay. Let me go back to the uh, PowerPoint. Okay. Like we did before, uh, we are using a uh, an access uh, point to add the car holder or the credential that I can use for my user. And on the manual entry, I want to go over this uh, uh, fairly shortly in a live system. Um, I can actually tell which type of car do I have. Now, for a manual entry, I'm going to have, or I'm going to need more information uh, than normally most of the users will have. Yes, we do have the car number written on the actual car, but most people don't necessarily have the facility code or the um, or the car format. So this is the uh, information that I'm going to need if I'm going to use a manual entry. And basically, facility code is uh, a way to separate different places. So, for example, uh, a company can have uh, ten locations uh, with separate systems out there. It could be that each one of them do have a separate facility code, uh, but then it might have the same car number. So that's a way to um, basically tell that this car, uh, this car holder, has a very unique car, even though it's car number two, and the other system also has a car number two. It comes from a different facility code. Okay, and again, uh, the car format will have to be known to be able to use the manual entry here. So another option in our system in security desk is called car requests. So let's say for example um, I don't have access to a printer which I can complete and I can print my car but someone else um, has it. I can still enroll my user or my car holder and then request uh, this car holder to uh, for another person to complete the enrollment process and actually print the car. Let me go back to my system and let's take an example. If we go back to car holder management, I'm going to create a new car holder and I'm going to call this guy Ben Jones. Okay, and now we are going to add a credential now, but instead of adding the credential, we're going to request a car. Okay, again, I don't have access to the printer, so I really can't com uh, uh, complete my process. So I'm just going to request it. I'm going to select uh, the reason why I'm requesting this car. It's a new car, so it's a uh, contractor, for example. I can also uh, select uh, when to activate my car. Basically, say never. I can actually do it, activate this credential right after the enrollment or at a, a specific time. For now, uh, and also I can select which template I can use for now. I'm just going to select right after the enrollment. I'm not going to select a template and I'm going to click OK. I'm going to save and close. And if we notice now, right on the top, I have a car request. If I want to complete the car request, I can go to double click on the uh, in, uh, in the icon here. We have our car holder, Ben Jones. The reason why we were requesting the car and the activation is going to happen right after I enroll, complete enrollment. If I click on uh, associate the car, I have the options here. I'm going to select existing credential because I already have one available. Um, in the system, it's 45. Could double click. And there it is. If I wanted to print the car, I can do that at this time. Or I can just click on close. And I completed my enrollment. If I go now to a monitor and let me go ahead and monitor my doors door number two and also door number one I believe uh, this user is part of uh, the door group um, car holder door group one let me go ahead and present the car okay access denied okay no access rule to sign but if I go to door number one there it is and I've granted access to Ben Jones. And again, there's also a, uh, a task on their security desk called the card request history. If I wanted to, uh, for some reason, know who requested the car, I can run a report based on time, the car holder, uh, the credential that was uh, requested, 
uh, the request door and um, uh, the person requesting the actual car as well. Now if we go back to uh, again one of the tasks that we have uh, we've been talking about creating car holders but we also have the task to create credentials and it's called the credential management task. This is what we're going to use to add credentials into our system. Um, we can actually create uh, credentials one at a time or add the credentials to the system one at a time or we have something that's called the badge enrollment. Um, let's quickly go back to my system and let's take a look at that uh, um, that option. Again if we go to security desk let me browse all the tasks and we're going to go to credential management. I have all the credentials uh, that currently enroll on the system but if we go to batch enrollment now we have the option to add several cards at the same time. Uh, we've seen this option before automatic entry this is when I use a current uh, desktop reader or a door to actually enroll my cards. Uh, present it to an access point I'm using door number one and door number two uh, on our example here and the credential prefix uh, this is basically uh, the name, uh, the naming convention that I'm going to be use, uh, be using on my cars. Um, so, for example, if I want to add a uh, uh, a car and call it um, Spare Cars, I can use that. Now we notice here that uh, we have uh, two brackets uh, with two pound signs uh, uh, inside the bracket, and then a number. It's basically that is again this is the uh, how I'm going to name my cars the two brackets they mean there's going to be two digits uh, on the card number and the first number used is going to be um, the number one so right now if I take a car to door number one we're going to see that that credential is 0045 actually this car is being used already so let me take another car now we see that uh, spur car and the number we got two digits uh, with the first number being 01 now let's say for example I didn't want to name it spur cars I just want to name it spare so you can see I can actually change uh, the way that I name the car uh, in the credential prefix here. Uh, if also, for example, I wanted to add more uh, digits into the uh, the car or the naming, I can just add another uh, pound sign, and now I have a four-digit car number with the first number being number one. I also wanted to start, for example, on number five. I can change number five, and that will be the first car that I'm going to use. Okay, so let's delete this thing here. Now again, we have more information here. When do I want to um, expire the car? Specific dates, uh, say the expiration date, first use, more information. If I want to assign a template, which I don't have one assigned right now, I can do so at, at this point. Now the manual entry, this is really good for when I have uh, many cars to enroll. Uh, let's say for example, I have a brand new box of cars that I want to add at the same time. I don't necessarily have the box with me but I know again the facility code and I know the uh, the car number uh, and when we're dealing with brand new cards uh, we normally know they're all sequential and I know again the car number the facility code comes on the car box and I can use that information to again enter it right here. So let's say I want to use uh, Give it a name, spur cars, and I want to use uh, five digits. And let's say, for example, uh, the first car on that box is uh, 2500, and I have a box of 50 cars, so the last number here is going to be 49, and I can quickly go ahead and um, change it here as well because my first number is going to be 500 and I can then select to uh, 
up here and roll my cards and there it is I click on enroll and automatically I have all those um, cards that I selected with a name credential the amount of uh, digits that I have and the first car available Two. I got basically 50 cars here now they're not enrolled in the system till I click on enroll and there they are now I have without having this the cars in front of me I already enroll 50 credentials that are available now in the system well thank you very much and uh, I hope to see you in the next uh, webinar have a good day